today in this uh, live webinar i am going to briefly show about one type of uh, kinematic joint in catia mechanism design which is called as dmu kinematics workbench so the joint which i will show right now that is about the point curve joint and uh, to create that joint initially we should have some different joints as well which will be uh, responsible for the movement which happens due to the point curve joint so we will see everything of that in brief so for that i am having this assembly which is named as point curve joint example wherein there are two parts uh, one is the plate or base plate that is the fixed in the context of mechanism and the other one is a cover so the cover is uh, having uh, fully constrained with uh, plate dot uh, plate part and uh, both of them are having a joint in the context of mechanism that joint is nothing but rigid joint because these two form a content of a ground body so you can see the node of applications where in mechanism node i have created one mechanism named as point curve joint and here you can see that there is one fixed part that is the plate this one and there is one joint that is nothing but the rigid joint between the cover and plate so this i am having initially and uh, inside this cover there is a slot below in the plate and over that uh, slot i need to uh, assemble one slider and for that i should have some joint instead of constraint so to create that joint i should go to start menu digital mockup and dmu kinematics workbench and uh, for better visibility i will hide the cover dot cat part so in this slot i need to uh, assemble that other part which is the slider one uh, with a prismatic joint because a prismatic joint will give us a degree of freedom of translation one degree of freedom so for that i will go for components and existing component and let me call that slider one and uh, this i will not call as a single part rather i would call the sub assembly which is slider 1 and slider 2 guide so you will understand the function of this uh, sub assembly which contains two components slider 1 and other one is slider 2 guide so i am opening this sub assembly and uh, let us first uh, put the compass onto it and let me take it to a different position along with translation and rotation so that i can visualize it better in the context of my mechanism and uh, let me just put this compass over here okay so before uh, having the prismatic joint for this uh, this assembly contains two components one is the slider 2 sorry slider 1 and this is the slider 2 guide so that's why this uh, slider 2 guide is uh, assembled with respect to the slider 1 with a rigid joint so that these both are having uh kind of a connectivity between them and uh, they are said to be contents of a one rigid body in the context of mechanism so uh that's why this assembly is also having one sub mechanism let me import that first i will go for this uh, option import sub mechanism and it has been imported you can see here there is one rigid sub assembly imported sub mechanism this contains one rigid joint only that is between the slider 2 guide this part and slider 1 this part so now um, i will create the prismatic joint between this sub assembly and the slot over here in the plate part so for this uh, prismatic joint there is a line 1 line 2 and plane 1 plane 2 kind of combination so for line 1 and line 2 the line 1 should be from this sub assembly the bottom edge of this uh, slider 1 part and line 2 would be the edge over here inside the slot of plate and for the plane let me select the bottom face of this uh, slider 1 and the upper face of this uh, slot in the plate and uh, this joint i will leave with the command i will not enable this command and i will say okay to create this one and now it is assembled over there in the slot this slider can slide in this direction which is given by the y component of axis system so it is free to slide this way then 
next part which i want to call that is nothing but the slider 2 which will be inserted into this uh, uh, cutout over here and for that this guide is available in the sub assembly so let me go for again existing component and that would be the slider 2 so again for this slider 2 let me first arrange it to a proper position so that i can create the prismatic join properly so this is the rough position for that then i will create one other prismatic joint between this slider 2 and the guide of slider 2 this part so for line 1 let me select uh, this bottom edge in the slider 2 and similar edge in the slot of this guide then for plane i will go for the bottom face from slider 2 and the top face from from the slot of the slider 2 guide again for this prismatic joint as well i will not enable the length driven command that's why now for this point curve joint the top level mechanism there are degrees of freedom to be said as two because they are not having any commands associated with them so let me keep it as it is and now i just want to uh, coincide this face of the slider two with this face of the guide so to make that happen i will go to assembly design workbench and i would create a constraint of coincidence between this face and this face with a proper orientation okay and update now this constraint is only responsible for meeting of those two faces and this constraint is not taking part into joint creation so this constraint will not impact on the mechanism motion now with this uh, i want to assemble one more part in the assembly environment only that i want to use as the pointer dot point, pointer dot uh, get part so let me go for next component that is the pointer okay again first uh, i will snap to the object and let me take out the pointer to the roughly assembled position somewhere here okay and now i want to rigidly hold this pointer in this hole of the slider 2 so for that first is a coincidence constraint between the axis of pointer and the hole over here then next is i want to have some distance between the top face of this with this top face so a distance constraint between this top face of pointer and this top face of the slider 2 let me make this distance as minus 37.5 sorry okay update so now this is going to this position and uh, it is still free to rotate so i will have to create one more constraint that i will say as a fixed together between pointer and the slider 2 okay so this makes this uh, pointer fully constrained over there inside the hole of this slider 2 and uh, these three constraints which i just created i want to convert them to a rigid joint so for that i will again go to digital mockup and dmu kinematics and here there is one option of assembly constraints conversion so let me go for more and uh, let us find those constraints over here so the three constraints between pointer and slider 2 so let me choose all of them and they all make a resulting joint as rigid so i will create that joint okay so this point curve joint mechanism now will show us the rigid first joint between the cover and plate yes so i will have to show the cover again for better understanding so rigid between cover and plate then prismatic between slider 1 uh, sub assembly and the plate prismatic second joint between slider 2 and the uh, slider 1 sub assembly and the rigid between pointer and slider 2 then uh, for 
proper understanding of this i will go to assembly and uh, let me do this uh, graph tree reordering for the assembly because the sequence i need to manage properly so this slider 1 and slider 2 guides of assembly would be uh, before the cover so let me put it over there and say okay this will not impact the parent child relationship because the sub assembly is dependent on the plate and not on the cover okay so now let me go to again kinematics workbench uh, yes and one thing before that i will go to assembly design again and let me create again one constraint in the context of assembly that would be between the point on that pointer and the vertex of this curve on the plate dot p uh, dot cat part so this now creates the constraints and uh, again this constraint will not take part in the uh, joints of mechanism so this constraint will not be relevant in the context of mechanism now let me hide all these constraints for better visibility of the assembly and now let us uh, create our uh, the joint of point curve which is the uh, point of current discussion so let me go to again kinematics workbench and now i want that this pointer should move along the curve in the plate dot cat part so for that kind of a motion i will create that point curve joint so i would go for this uh, point curve joint creation in kinematic joints toolbar and first thing is curve let me choose this curve in the plate and for the point i will choose the point from the pointer and now i want to set this joint of point curve as the prime mover of this assembly so let me enable this length driven and that will now take care of the remaining two degrees of freedom of two prismatic joints now these two prismatic joints for the two sliders those will now move based on the length driven joint of this point curve type joint so once i say okay it will immediately show me that the mechanism can be simulated and the dof will become zero so i say okay it is saying that the mechanism can be simulated say okay and uh, the dof is now set to be zero because now the mechanism has been properly defined okay so now we should check regarding the motion which i intend is it possible to happen or not so for that i will go for this uh, simulation with commands option and now it will show me only one command that is, that is nothing but the command of this point curve joint and uh, the command maximum value is 206.138 and uh, since it is a length driven command so this value is nothing but the length of this curve so now if i drag this slider of the command it will move the pointer along the curve and uh, this movement along the curve for the pointer that is facilitated by using the two prismatic joints that's why prismatic joints are not not the drivers of this mechanism rather the point curve joint that is the driver of this mechanism and the two prismatic joints they are aiding in the motion like this so this is a brief about a point curve joint and you should remember that the point curve joint in most of the cases will not work on its own it should have some other joints as the uh, helping things over there so indeed over here the two prismatic joints they are helping the point curve joint to facilitate the motion so this was my brief introduction about this point curve joint in Uh, kinematic mechanism design of katia and uh, now i request you all people that please uh, visit our i get it page you will find a better and more content on this katia kinematics design in the i get it courses so do visit i get it page and do subscribe to the courses and get the uh, knowledge out of it get most of the knowledge out of it